I don't think I have the trick for that. Oh, I went too slow. I was too, I was early. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's so disappointing. Yeah. See, timing's always been an issue here, Katie Barmer, and this ties over to your essays and, and exam conditions, doesn't it? What have I told you about timing before? <laughs> right, let's go to um, the shared screen now, shall we? Yes. Right, so if I drop that, oops, right, let's reduce that down a bit so I get the screen back. Right, so back on um, the same one as we have been looking at previously, it's the um, prose extract. Now, you know that that is now going to be focusing on um, the idea of isolation, that significance of isolation. OK, so before we go back to and begin to sort of continue with annotation, um, do you want a little five minutes just to cast your eye back over the text again, remind yourself of it fully? And then give me your thoughts on isolation within that extract. Or are you good to go from the start? Um. Right, I'll make the executive decision. Five minutes just to cast your eye back over the text again, with you the focus now on um, the sense of isolation within that extract. Okay, and and how how significant it is. Okay. Okay. Yes, that that's what that's what happens with the virtual background, isn't it? You just suddenly appear from uh, out of nowhere. Um, see, um, Evan would be impressed. That would be his thing. You think I'd be doing sort of teleportation? <laughs> he's decided this morning that he's going to buy himself a ukulele. Oh my God! Good luck with that. I know. Oh, weeks of fun, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> no sleep for me. What, why? Where did the ukulele come from? Oh, I have no idea. He just comes up with these things. He's, and then he makes a decision and he sticks to it. Even if it <laughs> is for, for his benefit only. You know. <laughs> and how have the rest of the family taken to the news of the ukulele? Um, I don't think half of them know, to be honest. <laughs> Mum knows and she's like, OK, are you sure you want... This is how you want to spend your money. Are you sure? And... <laughs> The others, I think they're just a bit jealous that he gets an instrument. Not that, you know, yeah. they don't have their own accessibility to these things. But Tin and my older brother goes back to university this afternoon, so it's few timing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, give me a couple more minutes.
I also want to apologise if you can hear really weird noises. It's my mum cleaning my nan's floor, but they're having some sort of strange discussion about cleaning the floor at the same time as cleaning. <laughs> and I can just hear some questionable phrases. So if you can hear any of it, it's about the floor. Right. I'll, I'll be sure to bring that up here to um, your appearance evening slot next week. <laughs> Yeah. To be fair, living over my nan was never going to work out the best when there's a lockdown because the stuff that I hear through her floor, I'm like, I didn't need to know that piece of information. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> she spent 40 minutes the other night talking about her new dust cleaner thing that she's bought. Honestly, 40 minutes. <laughs> oh, dear. Right, see. Right, let, 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 let's return to this extract then. So, um, Abby, what are you seeing as being um, significant about the issue or the theme of isolation in this extract, please? Um, how Nanzine sees isolation, well, isolation is an aspect of every part of her life, even when she goes to see the tattooed lady. Firstly, the tattooed lady is isolated as well. But mm -hmm. She thinks that the strangers who well, there could be strangers that answered if she knocked on the wrong door. Mm -hmm. And she sees a tattooed lady as a kind stranger and someone she wants to get to know more. But everyone apart from that is she's fearful of. And yeah. um, she just has no confidence in her ability to be a part of the community. OK, good. Um, Katie? What about you? Um, well, the difference between chosen isolation and uncho like not chosen isolation, mm -hmm. I guess. Right. So we can think about just tidying the phrase up a wee bit. Um, we can think about self-imposed isolation, yeah? Yeah. Which is you agree, agree that's that that's a deliberate choice, isn't it? Where do you see that? Um, Katie. Well, Nazine is forced out firstly, like she's what is it sent away to london so she's forced yep. out of home, and then she's forced to spend every day alone whereas the tattoo lady is like she's detached and she doesn't want the like nazine doesn't think she'd want the interruption it's like she's choosing that style of life ah so that makes the tattoo lady and if you think about literature what does that what type of character does that make the tattoo lady You're living outside of your um, community. Um, Big clue. You're living out, outside, outside. An outsider. <laughs> However, did you guess that, Abby? That was that was that was yeah. divine insight there. I would say. I just know these things. So again, building on what Katie was saying there, so we can think of um, the tattoo lady as representative of that outsider through choice. Yes. Whereas Nazneen is very much, it's, it's come, she's in a, she doesn't have that choice, she's made an outsider. Hopefully you can hear in the background how I'm multitasking once again. Ah, uh, yes. Are you impressed? I'm very. <laughs> and, you know, that happens to Nazneen twice, doesn't it? I mean, she's, as Katie's mentioned about, you know, the fact that she's sent over here to be married. Um, it's, a, it's a, what do you call it? Arranged marriage. And so she's been sort of an outsider from her own community, that idea. Um, and then even with this community that she comes into in, in London, again, she's an outsider. Very good, very good. OK, what other types of isolation can we talk about here? And we're beginning to head towards that with some of the, po the two points you've made here already. But we just want to make it a bit more explicit, I feel. I would say gender isolation. Like, I think Nazine is gen isolated by her gender. Yeah, um, good. Um, do you want to build upon that? Do you want to uh, expand upon the initial comment there, Katie? 
Well, she's living with this man that she's obviously not, well, she doesn't really know and is not very comfortable with. And then I'm assuming this Dr. Azaz, whoever he is, is he sounds male. Yes, the... male, yeah. <laughs> so, I guess, like, her whole, like, the people that she's allowed to associate with are all male. She's not around people that would understand the issue she may be feeling or anything like that. Good, yeah. So we've got that sort of a... Uh... So we've got the male dominant background, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's that whole idea about it's chosen who that she can associate with, isn't it? Yeah, she can notice a freedom here. Um, okay, and even within that community, again, she's kind of remaining uh, aloof, doesn't she, uh, from other females. Okay, good. Um, Abby, back to you. Um, I would say cultural isolation yeah. as well. Oh yeah, it's a huge one, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, so we've got that sense of cultural isolation. Um, and what 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 gives you that idea of the cultural isolation there, um, Katie? Oh, Katie, Abby, sorry. What sort um, of? Um... Well, she can only speak two words of English, so she's already. Yeah verbally cut off from any community she's going to be in in England even London um and it doesn't seem like she's in a community of other Bangladeshi people or people who would speak the same language as her or culturally identify with her yeah yeah good and, and what are the two words that she knows in English sorry and thank you and what does that reveal Either she's going to, well, she's used to having to apologise for herself and or she's just having to hand out gratitude here, there and everywhere. And that's what is most, she's been told is the most important thing to know. Yeah, isn't it? And, and again, obviously, who, who will she have learned these words from, do you think? Her husband. Yeah, and, and that's the only two words that he's kind of armed her with. Uh, and and this, it's almost like, you know, as far as he's concerned, that's the only two words that you're going to know. Yeah. Um, you know, and she's always, she's forever going to have to apologise. And, and it, it isn't it, it's that idea that she will be forever in the wrong. Um, OK. Uh, and again, yeah, but that, that thank you, that sense that she should be grateful all the time. And who she should be grateful to? Her husband husband isn't it i mean it's that it's that sort of controlling uh, that we've got here as well um also with, with cultural isolation we can think about um you know the, the strange thing is isn't it and um, what we're getting here you know obviously if we're thinking about the food that's being prepared um they're not she's not and again, that, that's also through, probably through her husband in a way, isn't it? It's that idea. There's no sense of assimilation going on here. Um, the use, you know, that when they come down for dinner, is back to the, the, their own food uh, and their own sort of style of food, that sort of thing. And also the house is being run very much on the sort of uh, cultural beliefs of Bangladesh as well. Um, and it's that sort of strange thing again, which is going to make you feel that you belong to neither one, neither one community or the other. So I think if, if we look back at that, um, good. Um, and if we begin to think about, again, um, going back to the the idea that we had within this, the the PowerPoint and the previous lesson, how is the author kind of structured this extra, uh, this part of the extract? How has that been structured to reflect isolation? You never get to know too much in one go. It's okay. always just small paragraphs of little details. 
OK, so we can think about, yeah. OK, so we've got that. Then think about think about the style of the narrative here. How is the narrative taking place? It's just her thoughts. There's no conversation. Good. Yep, carry on. Oh no, that was that was basically it. That's it. God. Are you gonna go and say more? I guess it also focuses on her worries, which is generally oh, a sign of someone who's isolated, is that they're yeah. fixated on their own sort of issues because they don't understand yeah. anyone else's. Good. Um, so we've got the, the, the narrative structure you, you said there. That's the thoughts of Na Nazneen. So what sort of um, dialogue are we having? Um, Not a trick. Uh, go for the obvious like, answer, if it's your thoughts. Person. Right. So it's, well, we've got the third person because the, the narrator. The, the author's in control of the narration, but we, we do get to see her thoughts. So does that make it internal or external? Internal. Yeah. So we can think about how deliberately here, you know, to reflect that isolation too. The voice is internalised. It, it, it's it's not an outward voice; it's an inward one. And as you say, the thoughts focus on the negative, her, 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 her weaknesses at the moment, that sort of thing, her failings. Okay, um, oops. Okay, so let's go back to the actual uh, text itself here. Um, just want to move that a bit out of the way. We can take that one out of the way just now. I'll pop it back later. Um, so we've got Nazneen thought sometimes of going downstairs, crossing the yard and climbing the, the Rosemead stairwell to the fourth floor. She might have to knock on a few doors before the tattoo lady answered. She would take something, an offering of samosas or badges, and the tattoo lady would smile and Nazneen would smile. And perhaps they would sit together by the window and let the time pass more easily. She thought of it, but she would not go. Strangers would answer. She knocked her on the wrong door. The tattoo lady might be angry and unwanted interruption. It was clear she did not like to leave her chair. And even if she wasn't angry, what would be the point? Nazneen could say two things in English, sorry and thank you. She could spend another day alone. It was only another day. Now, what do you notice about the pattern of the language choice in that paragraph? Give me words to highlight, please, that all connect together, that all begin to reflect that sense of you know, isolation and doubt within the character. Um, an offering. Right, so we've got an offering. Yeah, you know, why do that? Okay, I'm going to kick off with the first one as well. You know, we have Nazneen thought, so we've got that internal thought. And again, thought is nothing, is something that is, doesn't have to be definite as well. So you say, yep, yeah, we've got the offering. Uh, it's like trying to take a gift, okay. What else can we highlight? Perhaps. Perhaps, good. Um, br 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 second line of that paragraph, um, there's two words, again, that tie into thought, perhaps. Might. Yep. Also thinking wood, yeah. And again, that's repeated again. And again, as you can see this. This is a projection that they would sit together. 
Okay, and again, we've got repetition of thought. She thought of it, but would not go. Um, okay, so when she's thinking about doing something, how does that build into the idea of isolation? It's all hesitant and not not Good. real. It's no, no action is going to be taken from it. It's just a hypothetical. Good. Good, good, good. Yep, spot on. And the only thing she's clear about is that the tattoo lady did not like to leave her chair. So why would she want to speak yep. to nurse? Yeah, isn't it? And again, she, she's already, isn't it? She's already thinking of reasons not to do it, isn't it? You know, she thinks, ah, because she doesn't want to. Yeah, might upset her, that sort of thing. But good, yeah, we're seeing that. Also, the sentence structure, when she's talking about, like, the hopefulness and the idea of meeting this tattoo lady, that she talks yep. in long sentences, like she's really thinking the idea through, but then mm -hmm. she, like, switches and shuts herself down with shorter sentences. Good. Good, good, good. We can pop that down here. Yeah. Yeah, that that's a bit because it's almost like she's sort of playing out a potential, but then straight away, yeah, she shuts it down because she again goes back to the, the to the thought of yeah, it's not going to work. That she always sees a pitfall. Yeah, and as you say, the certain the only time that certainty comes in is when she wants to um, remain isolated. Oops. Can you hear my dog? Yes. Yeah. That 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 is again. My wife has has gone out, left her alone, and she's just returned. I think clearly. Yeah. So <laughs> we don't torture our dogs, honest. Matty has taught her cat to sit, and she's so proud of it. She's <laughs> it like three times. Yeah. <laughs> oh. That is quite impressive though, isn't it? Because cats aren't that obedient, let's be honest. Mm. She was like, Katie, do you want to see my cat sit? I was like, you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> Performing cat. Oh, dear. Right, so good. These points that you're picking out now, really good. Good, good, good. Um, and again, right at the end there, isn't it? Um, she could spend another day alone. It was only another day. What's she doing there? What what is she doing? Justifying her isolation. Yeah, self justification of the isolation. Yeah. Okay. Very good. 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 Okay, so we've got that, that's good. And then it, it carries on with the, um, she should be getting on with the evening meal. Lamb curry was prepared, she made it last night with tomatoes and potatoes. Uh, there was chicken saved in the freezer from the last time. Dr. Azad had been invited but cancelled the last minute. There was still the dal to make and vegetable dishes, the spices to grind the rice to wash and the sauce to prepare for the fish that Chani would bring this evening. She'd rinse the glasses and rub them with newspaper to make them shine. The tablecloth had some spots to be scrubbed out. What if it went wrong? The rice might stick, she might oversalt the dal. Dal, Chana might forget the fish. It was only dinner, one guest, one dinner, one guest. Do we see anything there that's adding into that sense of isolation within the extract? I guess the cancelling of the guest. 
Yeah, well, again, isn't it? Um, even with the guest, it is only one, isn't it? One guest, one dinner, one guest, you know. So again, it, it, it's that control of numbers, isn't it? So it, it's, it's hardly sort of broadening her um, sort of friendship group and integrating her into the community. What else tells you that she's isolated here? The fact that she's prepared the next day's evening meal the night before. Yeah, you've got that. Yeah. And um, the fact that Chan is going to bring in the fish. What is she not doing in preparation for this meal? Or what does she not have to do? Get going out and seeing the world. Yeah. Well, not only just that, but she doesn't going to have to get the ingredients, does she? The assumption is all the other ingredients are, are there in the house already anyway. She's just waiting for the fish to be brought, which her husband's going to bring home at, at the end of the day sort of thing. So it's almost like there's, there's no reason for her to leave the, leave the house. That's been done deliberately. So again, that's going to create that sort of sense of uh, isolation with her. This back up to its rightful place, which I think was up. Oops, which was up here. Boom. Um, Um, and it's almost like she's a willing, isn't she? Um, sort of a, a willing. I'm going to put that word prisoner um, in inverted commas because she's not clearly not a prisoner. But it, it's that idea, isn't it? Through that isolation, she, she's she's finding reasons not to leave the house, and so she's kind of just sort of is that meekness, meekly accepting that you know that's her role here. Um, which again we can think about coming through and be from our cultural heritage too, but which prepares them from this sense of isolation, even within their own within their own community. Um, we can think obviously the food reflecting how much our culture is still with her, how important it is, um, and that carries on, doesn't it? After the 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 the, the reference to the dinner. One dinner, one guest. And again, if you think about the structure of the novel as well, the novel, of the extract, think about how those, you know, that's a three sentence paragraph, isn't it? But look how it, it, it really isolates again, you know, that one dinner, short, abrupt sentence, one guest. It's made to stand out again, isn't it? Just by its physical appearance on the page there. Um, she left the window open, standing on the sofa to reach. She picked up the Holy Quran from the high shelf that Chanu under duress had. Uh, specially built. She made her intention as fervently as possible, seeking refuge from Satan with fists clenched and fingernails digging into her palms. Then she selected the page at random and began to read. Um, anything of interest in that paragraph there in relation to the, the question that's being asked? The only relief she has from her loneliness and kind of her desperation for relief is her faith. Yeah. Even then, it takes effort for her to get up on the sofa, to reach up and to be able to access that. So even that is being compromised by a child. Yeah, yeah and he, he does it, doesn't he? Only under under duress sort of thing, isn't it? Yeah. Good. Um, again, it is that idea, isn't it, that showing how much um, her, her sense of her own cultural identity is important to her. I mean, you do get the idea. Do you think? Do you think her husband is going to be as um, religious as, no. as she is? No. No. The fact you know that the Quran's up on a high sh shelf. It's not. It's not easily accessible, um, especially not for her, isn't it? But for her, you know. So again, her food, her faith, and her religion—they're important to her. But these again keep her excluded.
you know, uh, here in England, it's keeping her separated, keeping her apart, not integration, um, not side to side. Um, and again, it, it seems a pretty, it isn't, a, it's, a, it's almost like a harsh religion as well. And look at, look what happens to her. Um, look how when she's reading it, you know, it's that idea of Satan, you know, um, and she's got her fists clenched, um, fingernails digging into her palms. Is this bringing her any comfort? No. No, and again, even with this, you know, it, it seems that it's a battle. Um, it's, it's something to be feared. Um, and then the extract that she reads, um, to God belongs all the heavens and the earth contain. We exhort you as we've exhorted those to whom the book was given before you to fear God. If you deny him, know that to God belongs all that the heavens and earth contain. God is self-sufficient and worthy of praise. What out of that, you, what could be really useful for you to um, borrow or quote that say here we just see isolation being reinforced again, even in her faith? God is self-sufficient. Yeah, God is all you need. Yeah. So even where she goes, that, that area where she goes for, you know, sort of, um, I won't say sort of peace of mind, but where she's going for some, some comfort, even the religion is telling her, you know, God is all you need. And it is that kind of sort of, you know, almost like, not quite fundamentalist belief, is it? But I mean, it's that idea. I mean, it's a, that extreme belief. And again, it's the same in Christian religion, isn't it? It would be that idea where you go back um, a couple of centuries. That sort of idea would be sort of permeating in our own Christian faith too. You know, God is all that you need sort of thing in your life. Um, And remember, this is supposedly um, chosen at random, isn't it? She just, uh, she's, it says she selects a page at random and then bloom and heck, it, it just goes to sort of reinforce her beliefs. And again, because she's kind of, you know, keeping herself in her thoughts, isn't it? it? It just reinforces everything that she's thought before this, you know, just keep yourself to yourself. And you can see that reaction straight away, isn't it? The words calmed her stomach and she was pleased. Even Dr. Azad was nothing as to God. To God belongs all that the heavens and the earth contain. She said it over a few times aloud. She was composed. Nothing could bother her. Any comment you want to make upon that, that the way that it, it, it ends? The bit where it's like Dr. Azad was nothing, it was nothing to God. It's like people aren't as important. It's like isolation is nothing because you have God almost. Like why bother making friends? Very good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's that spiritual being. Yeah. It's everything. What about that? She said it over a few times aloud. She was composed. Nothing could bother her. What's the impact of that? What what what's the effect of those words? What how is she using them? Do you think she's using them as instruction and taking them as literally as they can be read? Oh, good. I like that. Yeah, yeah. And it's almost isn't it? It's almost like it's a mantra, isn't it? To get her back into that. Almost it's almost like she's kind of zoning out from human contact, isn't it? It's, re it's retreating into that sort of spiritual place in our mind, saying, right, you know, God is everything, you know, God is everything. Everything in the heavens and the earth, that's God, all is God, and that's all I need. So it's almost, isn't it, like a, it's some sort of, um, as you say, kind of instruction that she's giving to herself to shut herself down and just to remain completely and utterly isolated. Good, good, good. Good annotation. Whoops, just taking that away now. Um, so we can see how that, that ties in with that question now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so next week we'll get you to respond to that extract, Jeff. Yeah? Okay. Okay. Um,
trying to think we have when we have lessons next week. Um, is it the, next week? Is it next week? The Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yes, it is. Yeah. So, do we fancy doing that one? Do you, what, what which would you prefer? I'm, I'm happy to go with either way. Do you want to do that one in lesson time on the Wednesday? We just type it up. You know, I'll just you know, you, you don't have to stay in a call. You, I'll just be around on Teams if if you need to um, sort of query anything with me. But you just sort of do that in kind of vague exam conditions. Or do you want me just to say, right? I want you to complete that next week. On a specific, and we can we can even say it doesn't have to be a specific day, but I can say, right? I want you to complete that next week, and I want you to use, like, I think you can have forty-five minutes, fifty minutes to complete that as a task, in a word document. Just pop it up in the one note. Then, which would you prefer? Because basically, what I'm looking at is what gets the best gets the best work from you. I don't mind either way, really. Hmm. <laughs> Can we do it in lesson time? Yeah, do you want to do that? Because I, I just didn't want you to do it and think, oh, it's a bit of a waste of a lesson sort of thing. Um, I'm happy oh, to run it that way. Yeah, so if we, if we say, if we, if we, if we say we'll do that on Wednesday then, yeah? Yeah. Okay. You do it on Wednesday's lesson right in the middle, because that Monday we can set up all the all the um, creative things as well. And we'll, we will be doing more of these unseen project tracks as well, get more practice at them. But I think, yeah, we'll, we'll do a lot of the, creative stuff on Monday, set that up. Wednesday, do, do the task. And then on Thursdays, we'll begin to look at another kind of unseen unseen extract as well. What I might get as well, what may, might be quite good, is for you to teach me and the rest of the group. If I, if I gave you, an, how about if I gave you an unseen extract to take away with a question, and then you take me you know, so that you each get an opportunity to take us through it. I think that's another good way of gathering evidence. OK. <laughs> I'm, tr I'm trying to read Katie's eyebrows there. I'm not sure if that's a positive raising or a... Hmm, <laughs> thinking that one. Ha thinking that one. I just thought it'd be... Uh, again, it'd just be maybe nice for you to lead because do you know what's going to happen at university? The be tutorials where you have to take the lead. You'll be given the papers in right next week, Katie. I want you to take us through, and it'll be you know it's something to do with your politics module. Yeah, it'll be next week, Abby. I want you to take us through step by step guide how to deliver your first baby to the rest of the group. You know, bring your own props along if you wish. Da, 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 da. But you, I mean, you know, you're going to have that to sort of you know you're going to have to sort of take tutorials at times. That that's what you'll have to do. Maybe a good thing to sort of maybe think about. And um, yeah, don't worry. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect you to fill the whole. 55 minutes like I do with just you know flipping aside and all that sort of stuff but I just thought you know it could be like a 15-20 minute slot where you take us through this is how I tackle the, the, the this extract this is what you should be looking out for okay one to think about I think I think it'd be quite good quite useful and what you do is you'll get you'll get your feedback on your um but handmade Jesse over the weekend okay so I'll come back because that's all. I know you both submitted them all now and you're both happy with them. So that'll come back to you this weekend as well. And as, as a Brucey bonus, you might get that unseen poetry back this weekend too. Hey! What? The long awaited, the long awaited unseen poetry. Yeah. I'm going to have yeah. to reread my answer, sir, just to remind <laughs> myself. I, I'm going to have to go back and reread the poems as well to remind myself of the question too before I do the proper marking <laughs> on it. Yeah, sort of thing. But yeah, get, get those done, sort of thing. Um, yeah. But that's hmm, very good work again. And now we just wait for um, Mr. Drakeford's announcements today. See what's happening in Wales. Mm. There may be the slight glimmer of hope. But I'm thinking maybe that after the March the 8th one seems to be a common date that they're all looking at now. So hopefully then maybe we may actually get back in a classroom sometime March, maybe. Well, I think definitely after Easter. I think, def I think it's a definite after Easter. Mm. It's just whether we get in a little bit before or not. Yeah, I think once it starts warming up, things will move a lot faster then. Mm. Yeah. How have you been? How have you been coping with this one anyway? This lockdown, just to finish off, uh, has it been a struggle? More of a struggle this one than the other ones, or has it gone okay? Um, it's been strange. Christmas was a weird time for me, mm. but I think having school 
and having lessons all day is just it, you did you just don't remember it's just a routine now it's just that's what it is and then mm. apart from that because at the minute everything is just essay to essay assessment to assessment yeah that's just all it is so yeah. however you now have your virtual pub meeting to look forward to with Shakespeare Gatsby and a poet of your choice can we dress up sir can we each be one of them and can we oh, my, oh my giddy aunt. Katie we can wear our um a book date, our world book date. Oh, yes! <laughs> Blimey. Blimey. There is a thought, there is a thought as well, sort of thing. Um, just to finish off, how's the uh, thing be coming along? The Romeo, Romeo. Is that, is that uh, hit the box uh, at the moment? Or? Well, we've chosen the. Uh, oh, are you? Oh, very good. Excellent. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> see, 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 at least we still have some creativity going. I'll never pass up an opportunity to express my love for Katie. <laughs> oh, what, what are you going to see? You're not going to have that. I'm telling you now, you won't get these bizarre tasks to do at university. <laughs> it's all going to be very straight laced. And I can just, I'm just imagining a, a tutorial one day, one of you saying, could we try doing this? And the professor's just going to look at you and just think, good God, what were you taught at school? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, well, thank you. That was a good, good week, good lessons as ever. And I will see you all Tuesday next week, next. Yeah, yeah. To discuss creative things. Have a nice weekend. And you too. Okay. All right. Bye. See ya. Bye. Bye.